Mikey Domagala. Welcome to Combo's Court. Come on. You know I'm going to get the name right. Come on, Mikey. 100%. 100%. You got it. You got to do your homework. (laughs) Tell me more about the truth, man. A new ESPN podcast. Before we get into anything, we have to get into that, man. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, first off, for the listeners, I didn't realize we were on air, but but yeah, for the the Truth Podcast, you know, I'm I'm very blessed to have been reached out from ESPN to pair me with Jermaine Barnes, uh, another overseas player who plays in Germany, for an ESPN podcast called The Truth, and that's sponsored by ESPN CLT Pod Center. So that is dropping on December first. We're going to be filming in November. We got a couple of huge guests coming on. Uh, the podcast is called The Truth, and there's an NBA player who goes by The Truth. Not saying he's episode one, but he may be coming in the near future. I'll give you that hint for a guest. So I feel, I'm very excited to get to happen. I feel like that guess. I feel like that guy's underrated. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that guy's underrated. You know what? I, I think people see him on TV, you know, saying some crazy stuff, and they don't remember how good he was. Yeah. You know, you're a true young vet. You know, your co-hosts play overseas, so he's going to have a lot of great stories. An overseas vet is more big time to me, to me personally, than an NBA vet because they've seen some crazy things. No oh, matter, yeah. I, I, I don't know him personally, but I know he saw some crazy stuff. <laughs> oh, he's played with so many guys, and he has so many connections. And he's going to bring on some guys that were in the NBA who he met overseas. And, man, he gave me a little taste of what he saw over there and, you know, dealing with some of these guys, it really is crazy. And I know from your experience, I'm sure you've seen some stuff too. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, I think I learned a lot on the court, but even more off the court. I'll just leave it at that. We could get into my story some other day, but I want to stick to you. Um, NBA buzz, obviously consistency is key. I think me and you both know that, but how much of your growth had to do with you just getting early on platforms? Oh, 100%. So timing is everything. So kids nowadays will reach out to me and say, I want to make this page. I'm going to do this, 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 and this. Then I'll say, okay, that's great for a hobby, but how far do you think this is going to go? Like, I don't, I'm not trying to be like, you know, an a-hole when I come across to these kids. I just want to be real with them. They go, then they'll say whatever. Then I'll go, well, you know, I started in 2012. So I have eight years on you now in 2020 of growth. And other pages have years on you as well. So I'm not trying to discourage you, but if you want to make it, you got to, you need to be so unique and take a different angle on things. So people want to follow you rather than if you make a page like mine, they're just going to follow me because I'm bigger and have the experience. But yeah, like you said, it's consistency, but a lot of it is timing, as you said. Yeah, I think a lot of kids probably want to have a page like yours, but don't realize the work that goes into it. That is 100% true, 100% yeah. true. Just yeah. an everyday grind, just trying to be great every day and just, hey, I haven't missed a day since uh, January 2012. Every day, huh? Oh, every day. W- at a wedding, at birthday party, w- whatever it may be. So listen, I mean, I don't know if you saw The Social Dilemma, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on screen time. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. That was uh, that made me take a little half a step back and think for a second. Yes, yeah. I did. Excellent. Definitely, because I've had Buster on the pod before, and I agree with him 100% when he says, and for me too, I don't mind me with the screen time as long as I'm producing content and keeping Combo Nation entertained. You're part of Combo Nation. Mikey, I have to keep you entertained, man, and you got to keep me entertained with NBA Buzz. But I think if I start scrolling, that's the issue, which I think I do a very good job of not scrolling too much. Like I obviously want to see what my friends are doing. What do you think about all of that and the movie in itself? Yeah, first off, I want to give a shout out to Buster. I mean, he's a friend of mine as well. He's a yeah, great dude. Definitely. And social dilemma, like I said, man, that made me take a step back. But then I started thinking about it. For the way me and you do social media, what Buster does with social media, it's like it's part of our thing to be on social media that much and to yeah. really give our people our content and stuff like that. For the average person who's just, on TikTok for hours and hours, Instagram for hours and hours, getting you know their mind skewed on whatever it may be from politics or false news or you know fight fight pages that are just you know corrupting their minds, seeing fighting all the time. That's not healthy in my opinion. And the constant on the phone when you can't even have a conversation with them, 
people go blind, like uh, deaf, excuse me. I've tried to talk to someone when they're texting. They don't even hear me. I've, I've been trying to develop that where if I need to post something quick in, in the middle of a conversation, I could still talk to you and not look at my phone. So the social dilemma was really awesome. I loved how that was, whoever directed that was, you know, a genius, how they laid that out. Do you, do you take some time to get your workouts in and talk and make sure you talk to family and friends face to face? Well, that's kind of hard in the current situation you're, we're in, right? Cause like we're always talking to friends on FaceTime and even family now, but do you make sure you get your time? Because I know you're posting like four a day at least, right? How many, how many do you post a day? All depends. Try to keep it between like four to seven. That's and a lot. Uh, yeah, but it's almost like it's second nature now. And to yeah. get to your point, pre, pre-pandemic, dude, I mean, yeah, of, of course I have a social life. I mean, you know, I got a girlfriend. I got friends. I work out at the gym. Nice. Uh, I play pickup with my friends. I, yeah. used to, I used to box from like 2012 to like 2018, all okay. through NBA Buzz. So – I've learned that NBA buzz is a part of my life now and I try to master it as much as I can. So before school, I'll go make content. When I had an internship at SNY this semester, like, yeah, I, I worked and everything like that. Like I would bring my computer on the train, make content on the train, schedule posts during the work hours. Time management. So, Time management yeah, is everything. Time management. You just need to, it's second nature now to me that I got a life. It's all good. I I do everything I would do if I didn't have NBA buzz. Got you, got you, Mikey. You're an NBA. You're a New York Knicks fan. You're a New York Knicks fan. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What would you like to see them do in the offseason, man? They got some options in free agency, and what would you like to see them do in the draft? <sighs> well, I'll hit free agency first. Okay. I don't want Westbrook. I would want Chris. Oh Paul. man! Right off the bat. Right off the bat. <laughs> I would want Chris Paul. He's just a little, he's getting a little up there in age, man. You, you're going to have to give up some future for a 35 year old Chris Paul. I don't like it. He would help the team though, but I would want to see them go after like a Fred. What, well, what future is the question you might ask? All right. Well, <laughs> all right. All right. That's true. That's true. But I would like to see them go for like a Fred Van Fleet or a DeMar DeRozan to, yeah. cause they, they need a scoring vet to pair with RJ and Mitchell and Randall. Um, in the draft, who, man, we struck out with point guards almost every damn year over the last, like, decade. And I like the kid Killian Hayes from Germany. Yeah. And I also like Obi Topin a lot, but I don't know if he's going to fall to them. Cole Anthony, he might bring some Broadway stuff like a, a LaMelo Ball would do for his high-flying dunks and maybe scoring ability, but I'm not, I can't trust that kid just yet to be NBA ready just yet. And I don't want them making a mistake in this draft. Yeah. We see that staying on the Easter, staying in the Eastern conference. I think we seen Boston. I wanted to get to Boston because I've heard you talk about this on a podcast. Actually, um, Bam was a big issue for them and just a big problem for them. And I think the big man is, is a role that they're going to have to fill somehow who would you like to have them target in uh, in free agency? Yeah, so for the Celtics, I was on a different pod, like you said the other day. I brought up DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah, I like and that. I, I was thinking about it. If, if, if he's healthy, Boogie, and he could produce even half of what he did in Sacramento, that would be a great acquisition for the Celtics. Then I'm talking to some friends about it. Oh, Mikey, uh, you know, DeMarcus Cousins, he's not going to be healthy ever again. But I said, okay, well, maybe. How do you know? How do you know that? How does somebody know that? That's what you know. That is true. But say yeah. he is injury prone. Look yeah. at a Hassan Whiteside for the Boston Celtics. They need rim protection and they need a big body to put on a Bam out of bio, like you were saying. Decent scoring production. So I would, I would like to see them go for a a, a Boogie Cousins or a Hassan Whiteside. Yeah. Is there any? What do you? What do you do? You, did you see any other issues with them in the postseason? Because I think Kemba wasn't a hundred percent, in my opinion. What else did you see with them? I think a lot of people had them winning the East, especially when they saw the Bucks were out. Uh, what did what do you make of that? Yeah, I definitely did. Because who else were they going to go through? And uh, I'm surprised Miami beat them. But like you said, Kemba Walker, he just wasn't himself. You, there must have been an injury, you know, lagging him in some way there, because he just wasn't himself. Poor shot shot selection, bad percentages. 
also, I think, you know, another year of growth for Tatum and Brown is just going to help them even more. As time goes on, they're still so young, man, you know, so they yeah. still have to grow and that's just going to take time. You, you bring in a center, you get Kemba healthy, give him the confidence, talk, you know, light a fire under his butt. We need you to be the Charlotte Kemba and they'll be fine. It's such a shame because we agree they need a center and Canner is such a bucket on offense, but on defense, it's just, it's just a big issue with him, you know? I love Ennis. I love yeah, yeah. the Knicks. He would make me laugh like every game. But and <laughs> no, he's solid. Just defense. Uh, he's got to he's got to tighten up. Yeah, I wanted to shift to the other New York team. Uh, I've had Renee Washington from Locked On Wizards on my pod. I've been on her pod. We talked about this a little bit on one of our pods. But she thinks that KD and Kyrie are actually going to clash. I don't know if I'd agree with that, but it's a fair point. How do you think things will go in Brooklyn, especially this next year coming up? And just their roster construction isn't all there, in my opinion. It doesn't really fit yet, but what do you see? 100% could clash, I would agree with, but I don't think so. And I think it's because Kyrie is going to take the Robin role while KD takes the Batman role. And I think Kyrie is so much suited better as a Robin, like he was for LeBron. Do you think he wants that role, though? That's the question. Uh, I think after his Boston Celtics experience, he should have to get that role. Yeah. I know, his, you know, the way he thinks of things with the earth being flat and other things he says on social media, he might be a little all over the place. That was actually in Social Dilemma, right? I think I, they mentioned that, right? I think it was. I think they did mention that. Please. Yeah, yeah. Because then he, then he wanted to say that uh, he, went, he went down a uh, YouTube wormhole and then uh, yeah, 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 he apologized yeah. for it. Exactly. <laughs> but – he may not want it, but if he wants to win, he needs to sacrifice a little bit. He's got Kevin Durant, arguably top three player in the NBA. In my opinion, I think he is. And, you know, it worked with LeBron, with LeBron being at the head, Kyrie doing everything else. I think it's going to be like that with KD. And Kyrie and KD are friends. They've been friends. So maybe they won't play. And uh, the team around him, I think they got to they gotta flip Spencer Dinwiddie as much as I like him for more pieces. Because I think Karis LeVert is a much more craftier, efficient player than Dinwiddie. So I think doing something with Dinwiddie in the trade market or whatever it may be to get more pieces around that team, well, they'll, they'll be contenders, man. It's going to be a lot of fun seeing the team in Brooklyn be a contender. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of uh, Karis's game. But do you think he's the right fit as a guy who needs the ball a lot with Kyrie and KD? Like, do you think them three could start – and be a great fit. And what two players would you like to see them put around them? Um, I've obviously Jared Allen but and Joe Harris, but do you think that's too much on-ball stuff going on? It's going to be a lot of on-ball. Yeah. And your point about Levert, I agree, but I think Levert this offseason needs to see the role he's going to go into. It's going to be the third option off the bench. When you're asked to score off the bench, Harris, you got to do it. But if you're on the floor with Kyrie and KD – you got to turn into more of like a KCP, more of like a, a spot-up shooter who's not exactly creating his shot as much. I know Karras has the handle to get to the rim, but he needs to do that. For people I would put around Kyrie and KD, it's a great question. I'd have to think about that a little more because what they would need, I think, is just a really solid defender in there to really just lock down on defense, let Kyrie, KD, and Karras do the work on offense. I saw your post about Jared Dudley on NBA Buzz. First of all, do you, are you at the point where people are posting for you ever, or you do it all yourself at this point? Oh, I, d I do it all. So, oh. so when you become – I mean, you're starting to become a personality of your own. And yeah. is there going to be a point where you're going to have people working for you posting? I mean, I, I used to have people work for me, but it just – you can't trust these people, man. They don't do it like – that's the thing with, with scaling. They can't do it quite like you could do it. But at a point, you're going to need to free up your time, right? Well, I, listen, I think about – I've probably thought about this like every day of the last year because I'm becoming, like you said, more of a personality. I'm going to be working full-time soon for whoever it may be. Got the po multiple podcasts going. So I am a little – school, I'm still in college. So I'm a little swamped. But I love it. That being said, though, eventually I'm going to have to bring in like – top-notch people who – or even a younger person who I could kind of mold their game to do exactly what I do. Because, no, I'm not getting sick of it, but the time management's going to get tough. So, yeah, I have thought of it, and I'll make it work. It's all good. Yeah, I have had 
I have had people work for me in the past. And like I said, a little unreliable, not the same quality. And it is what it is. Yeah, when the ESPN podcast turns into host of Sports Center, it's going to be tough posting seven times a day, Mikey. It's going to be tough, <sighs> I man. I know. I know. All I, right. I, hope, I hope it'll get there. Hope it'll get there. It will. It will. All right. So, yeah, back to Jared Dudley. I mean, he was laughing at the Clippers. Was the Clippers the team you had all year? And what do you make of next year for L.A.? What move? I mean, with we, what we've seen with the Warriors, even if you're a championship-level team, you have to try and get better because there's so many contenders now. Um what moves are you hearing? I know you got the ears to the, so to say, streets, which the streets is probably now like Twitter and a Woj. I don't know. <laughs> the streets have changed. But what are you hearing for the Lakers? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I do. I do. I, I do have the ears. People do say my ears are big, but no, no, no. My, mine too. My, my, yes, <laughs> hey, it's all good. It's all good. But uh, yeah, as I'm thinking about that, I had the Lakers all year. To be oh, honest. me too, Mikey. I, I, I mean, you listen to combos, Corey. You must know that yeah, already. <laughs> of course. And once Kobe passed away, you know, rest in peace. You rest already know they're winning. Sure. You yeah, already know yeah. they're winning. Not saying yeah. it was rigged or anything like that. You just knew they were going to take it to the next level for Kobe. As energy, himself. energy. You're saying. Uh, yep, hundred percent. Yeah. You know, and just grittiness and just desire to just not want to f it up this year because that would, you know, it wouldn't be a great storyline. But, yeah. yeah, I had the Clippers contending right with the Lakers, man. I wanted to see that Lakers-Clippers final. You know, I'm not a, I'm a, a Western Conference final. I'm not a fan of either team. You know, I'm a New York Knicks fan, which is brutal. But for good basketball, that would have been great Western Conference finals if the Clippers could have got past the Nuggets. Yeah. And yeah. You know, it would have been nice to see Ka- uh, Kawhi on LeBron pg seeing if he could perform on the big stage against the you know hometown rival so i would have wanted to see it man i could have went maybe six or seven for sure yeah that's interesting man uh you mentioned the nuggets is bubble murray a whole year thing next year you think is is that what we're gonna see because if we see that it might be mvp murray (laughs) i I think so man i mean he's obviously obviously gonna slow down a little through the year but there's gonna be flashes like that he's still a young kid too man and he's just going to get better and better, and he's hungry. So yeah. I think he's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, Mikey, I've been known to make some predictions, and my prediction this year, I haven't even put it on social media. I think Minnesota is going to be better than people think, and the Warriors are not going to be as good as people think. Okay. What do you think, man? What, how do you feel about that? Well, first off, I'm assuming you're going to say the Timberwolves are going to do really good in the draft. Whether I it's think Lamello. so. They're right there. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of good yeah. options. Can't mess this one up now, you know? <laughs> so, okay, I would agree with that. I think pairing a LaMelo or an Edwards along with uh, Russell and Towns will be a pretty good trio, especially for the future. So maybe them just on the on the cusp of playoffs, I could I could get behind. Never know. Never know. Yeah, yeah you, and do, the, you never know. Yeah, and the Warriors, I think, they caught lightning in a bottle with Draymond, Clay. Steph, they're coming off a lot of injuries. I think it's going to be not as easy as people think. Like, it's a new time, you know? Uh, yeah. Obviously, LeBron transcends time, and it's still LeBron's time, which is kind of <laughs> crazy. But it, it, it just might not be the same as what people remember. And also, their surrounding team is just not as good as it was. So a combination of all that, it's going to be tough for them. What do you think about next year's Warriors? Uh, yeah, it's going to be different, like you said. But Steph, Steph and Clay didn't forget how to shoot. If That's they true. Say, That's you true. Know? Yeah, you got to think of it that way. But, yeah, uh, and it's not Draymond of last season. It's the usual Draymond who's a dog alongside Stephen Clay. It's who he needs. I'll admit it. It's, it's no, no problem. Can't do it alone. But, yeah, we got to see how Wiggins is going to do. We got to see what they do in the draft. They got to go get, they gotta get Washington yeah, in the draft. that's right. You, know, you, know, you, don't a, think, you don't think of them as a big draft team, but they're right there. Yeah, this year. exactly. They need a damn center. Well, that's, that's what they yeah. need. So you know? we know who the best fit probably is for them in the draft. It's probably Wiseman. 100%. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. they got to hope Wiggins has a great year filling his role alongside Clay and stuff. And then getting a good draft pick as a center. Other than that, maybe another bench piece in free agency. Who? I don't exactly know, but uh, a decent scorer off the bench. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's take it back to you. A few more about you, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, okay. Mikey, so take us behind the curtain. Take us behind the curtain. What are the best apps to make flyers, man? Talk to us. You got you to give us some of that secret sauce, man. 
I don't want to give away all my secrets now. <laughs> but, uh, Photoshop, Keynote on the computer on on Mac is all I do. I don't. I know kids use different iPhone apps, but I've I've tried and it's just too too much. I use Keynote and Photoshop. I was taught Photoshop by this like master in college, and it really helped me out. So yeah, that's how I do it. Flyers are amazing. I mean, you've seen a lot of platforms from the beginning. Do you feel podcasting is still in the infancy stages? And where do you see it going? Man, everybody in the damn grandma has a podcast now, right? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, but definitely. For, for especially us, the, wait, especially during the quarantine, Mikey. Oh my God. <laughs> but Jesus Christ. On every topic, you could like these people don't even care if they grow. They just want to like talk, which is cool. It's cool. It's fine. But yeah, then, yeah, no, definitely. More power to them. I want yeah, to see all the no, pod. No. I want to see I'm all not, the podcasts come out. I'm here to cons- consume some great podcasts. I'm not dragging it down. I just yeah. find it it's just funny how everybody's just jumping on, which is awesome. Yeah. It's awesome for media. Podcasting in the future, man, it's we're just gonna see more and more. And we're gonna see, I think, a lot of news coming out of podcasts. I mean, we do already, but more so like you know how Rogan wanted to debate Trump and Biden? I think we're going to see more of that in podcasts. And I think that should have happened because that would have, he would have got millions of views on it. I mean, the, the president's people probably didn't want to do it, which is understandable, but we're going to see more stuff like that, more mainstream stuff happening on big time platform podcasts. And, you know, that goes hand in hand with TV ratings going down and more streaming happening. So media is changing right in front of our eyes in 2020 2025 man people not might not even have cable anymore there might not even be newspapers anymore so things are changing podcasting is really another way to go yeah we mentioned screen time before a great thing about podcasts especially the audio version is you don't have to look at your screen you could do yeah. stuff you could listen in and it's a great way to uh, bring that screen time down mikey man you're always welcome back on the show great stuff um i look at you as like a young veteran man you're a true young vet <laughs> Keep- Keep up the great work and let us know where we could find you on social media and everywhere else. And also, thank you for tuning into Combos Court. I appreciate that, man. No, Combos. Thanks for having th- Combo. Thank you for having there me on. Go. I've been, been following you for a while. It would have been nice if we could have got down to that studio you've been in. That's that's Gotham Studio, right? You yeah, we'll, you yeah. know what? You know what? We have to make that happen when things get back up and running. That would be phenomenal, uh, we, de- we, definitely, we definitely have to get a, a in-person uh, pod session going for sure, Mike. Yeah, I would, I would love to meet you. And for all, all the, li- you know, I would love to meet you face to face in person. Definitely. For all the listeners listening, follow me personally at Mikey Domagala on Instagram and check out everything I do. NBA Buzz on Facebook, 2.7 million followers. Uh, Instagram at official NBA Buzz on Twitter as well. Uh, for people looking, I'm wearing the Inside Buzz merchandise. Oh, pointing at the Nice. Way. And uh, I got my banner behind me. That's my personal podcast with NBA players, journalists, and personalities then december 1st tune in to espn's the truth podcast featuring me and jermaine barnes some big legendary guests coming so combo again thanks a lot for promoting me and having me on anytime mikey you're always welcome back on the show talk soon keep up the great work yes sir thank you i will be i'll be pulling quotes in this interview and posting them for some debate and i'll of course tag you i would love that that would be great thanks mikey talk soon all right my man peace out later that was it, Mikey. Really appreciate you, man. Thank you. No, hey, no problem, man. It's, it's, it's always fun talking hoops, man, in the morning. Wake up, talk hoops. <laughs> little coffee. Yeah, I don't know. You might, you might be too young for coffee. You drink coffee or? Nah, nah, nah. That, that's a, <laughs> one, one, I don't like it, too. That's, that's an expense I don't want. I'm, try, I'm trying to get a Tesla next month. So. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Nice to meet you, Mikey, uh, virtually, and hopefully one day we could do this in person. Talk soon. And I'll tag you in everything and tag me in everything you got, and we'll talk soon, man. Really appreciate 100%. it. 100%. I'll, I'll do my best to push my audience to you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Talk right, soon. Man. Peace Later. out. Later.